Hi, welcome to Weekend Review, where we catch up on some of the headlines making news. Uh, I'm joined today by an esteemed panel. We've got Enterprise reporter Silas Allen, food dude Dave Cathy, and our sports editor Ryan Sharp. So we got a lot of stuff going on this week. Let's start with a uh, tragedy we had at the end of last week downtown, a worker falling out of a const uh, construction site and dying. Tell us a little bit about what that story and what we know. It happened uh, Friday morning at about 11.30. The uh, worker's name was Alex Baiza. He was a uh, uh, native of Honduras, uh, and he was working on a building called the BOK Park Plaza Tower. Um, he was apparently operating a scissor lift on the 14th floor at the time, and there was some confusion about what gear the scissor lift was in. It, it, some witnesses say they thought he was trying to make it go up and down. And instead, when he, when he pushed a lever, it went forward, and it went right out over an edge. Um, uh, a witness said that he had he grabbed onto some wiring to try to hold himself up, but his safety harness was buckled onto the uh, onto the machine, and so he was dragged down with it. Right, and that's some of the things that we looked at in the days after the accident was what were the safety measures that were in place, what were the safety measures that were expected to be in place. Um, Talk a little bit about the experts that you spoke to and what would be expected in that kind of situation. Right. We spoke to an expert who is actually a former uh, compliance officer with OSHA, and he said that when machinery of that kind is being operated at that height, there is expected to be some kind of bumper or, or some kind of impediment that would keep uh, an operator from just accidentally driving it over an open edge, which is what happened here. Now, it's not clear if that, if that kind of uh, barrier was in place in this case, but there was, there was some netting up around the perimeter of the building and also some sling nets over kind of around the edges. But our experts said that those, are not, those kinds of nets are not designed to stop something of this weight. Right, and then the tragedy of this is what we, we were talking about was he was actually, his safety belt was chained to the scissor lift itself uh, as opposed to maybe the building or something else. So uh, when the piece of equipment went over, there was really no, he was actually grabbing onto things at the end, uh, but it was the weight of the scissor lift that pulled him off the edge. Exactly. And uh, one of his coworkers told police that he tried to reach out and grab him and, and help, but he just couldn't get to him in time. Yeah. And it's lucky that the, on the ground, because obviously it, you know, 14 stories up and it hit right where a lot of the workers assemble to, uh, you know, send parts and uh, equipment up to the higher floor. So it was really sort of a, a lucky break maybe that no one else was hurt. Uh, so it's under investigation by OSHA, right? Exactly. Um, and we're not sure how long that's going to take. Right. It could take some time. Okay. Great. Uh, sad story. We'll keep uh, we'll keep an eye on that one as well. So Dave, uh, yes. we lost a food icon here, right? Yes. That's right. The charcoal oven closed uh, last Sunday. Um, we haven't completely lost it, but we certainly lost that the beautiful, beautifully landscaped property that it was on with a huge the iconic sign opened in 1958. Uh, that sign went up in 1960 and uh, it's been in operation ever since. That sign has only ever been painted once. It's made out of, uh, made out of porcelain so that it, it can uh, hold off all the bad weather here in Oklahoma. And it's right now in storage uh, in a warehouse uh, by a guy who's uh, trying to put together a museum for billboards and, and iconic signs and so forth. Now, Charcoal Oven, the owner is uh, David Wilson. He's 84 years old, still very active in the business. Uh, his daughter Ann helps him out. She's a real estate agent, and she told me that uh, they're planning to bring the concept back in some capacity at some time. But uh, as you can imagine, with a with an operation that old and that established, the transaction was pretty heavy, heavy, and uh, they had a lot of work to do. They closed it out on Thursday, I believe, and she told me they're going to take a breath, figure it out, and then decide what they're going to do next. And then you had a great story about this is sort of a, a passing era of a yeah. type, a certain type yeah. of restaurant. That's right. We sort of saw it with the cafeterias. Yep. Now we're sort of seeing it with these drive-ins. It's it's interesting how uh, you know. Uh, these these patterns are driven by our habits, obviously, and it's it's when the you know so it's simple supply and demand, and the demand diminishes for these st older style of restaurants when new technology comes along and changes things. And and yeah, charcoal oven was kind of interesting. It was sort of stuck between a drive-in and a drive-through because it actually was a drive-through that you went and then parked. So I think that's part of what made it maybe last a little bit longer than some of the others. Uh, although uh, here in the last month, the uh, lines out onto uh, North Expressway have stretched a good half a mile at most hours of the day. 
And so uh, the, I'm sure the uh, the, the uh, Bell Isle Library won't mind the closing. <laughs> but yeah, it, it is. It's the changing of a guard for sure. I mean, we still have Sonic, but it's just yes, not quite yeah. the same. You Sonic know? is the one that sort of found the magic of the drive-in and, and said, let's take this national. They, they, and, you know, they started small in Shawnee, didn't really come into Oklahoma City until the 70s. And, and they opened back in the 50s as well. And, but yeah, they're, they're now headquartered here, obviously, and they're known throughout the country. I don't even know how many countries they go into at this point, 30 some hundred units across the country. So we got one iconic place closing, but we have another iconic uh, Oklahoma tradition starting up. And the food <laughs> is uh, apparently the star at the State Fair. Yes, the State Fair has begun. And as always, people want to know, what should I eat? Well, it'll probably be something fried or probably <laughs> something, you know, stuck on a stick, most likely. But uh, my visit to, on Wednesday, we got to sample a lot of stuff from some of the vendors for the Great Taste of a Fair uh, competition. And uh, uh, the Coco Flow always does a great job. Coco Flow Cafe, they don't have a, a store, a uh, proper store anymore, but they're always out at, the, out at the fair every year. And they do special stuff around, uh, around the city, especially during the holidays. And uh, Gene and Kim Leiterman are the, are the sort of the chocolatiers of that place. And they do some great stuff. They had a bulgogi crepe this year. That's a Korean dish and Gene's mom happens to be Korean so he's using her, uh, her, her long time uh, recipe to get that done but he's got the chocolate fountain and all the goods and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, chicken on a stick, you know, won the, the uh, overall competition for the savory foods and the cinnamon roll which has been out there for years and years was the tops for the sweet uh, on the sweet side of the competition. So I've heard the pork chop, the pork yes. chop sandwich and yeah, the, the yes. corn. Yes, the pork, uh, the pork council always has a great booth. Uh, all things pork, they've got one sandwich, it's a pork chop and a pork burger and a pulled pork sandwich all in one. Or you can get those, you know, in single servings as well if yes. you like. Yeah, roasted corn is always really popular. Like I said, anything on a stick, when you start walking down those concourses, and what's great is you see all these actual wood fires and these makeshift grills that they built with, you know, cinder block and a big piece of metal, and that smoke gets going, and it's crazy. I mean, it's just. It's I'm actually, I'm actually going to go out this time. I have not been out to the state fair, so I'm going to check it out. And uh, pork is on the list. So. Make it happen. Okay, great. Ryan, big weekend in Norman. Uh, big weekend in the state. You got two uh, pretty big time football games this weekend. So tell us, what's, tell us about the dreaded folks coming in from the Buckeyes State. <laughs> You've got Ohio State coming in, um, which is typically one of the, the biggest traveling fan bases in the country. Um, they're right there with Alabama and LSU, some of the bigger SEC schools. Uh, we had a story in today's paper about their fan base that's coming in. They've actually rented out the Lloyd Noble Center for a big uh, pep rally tomorrow. Um, so it's, it should be an interesting game. Um, you factor the, the, the magnitude of the game and what's at stake with the large fan base, the first real competitive game that's going to be in that new with the new side of the stadium. Um, it should be a fun day in Norman. Stripes, right? We're going for the stripe out yep. or whatever. Um, at both schools, actually, they're trying to stripe the stadium. Um, it's, uh, it's something to get fans engaged, uh, something that looks cool on TV. Uh, it's a bit of a marketing deal, but uh, both schools are doing it this weekend. Now, how about O-State? Who do they have this weekend? They've got Pitt coming in, um, which uh, it's going to be an interesting game. Pitt averages about 230 or something yards rushing per game. Um, they're, a running ga they're a running team, um, something that OSU actually does defend and defends well. Um, they can stop the run. Um, of course, OSU coming off the heartbreaking uh, loss against Central Michigan and, uh, and Pitt all the coming off a big win against Penn State. Absolutely, right? and so you've got two teams coming off of different emotional highs, um, and so that'll be an interesting game as well. So we got a lot of stuff going on in town this weekend: uh, State Fair, football, all sorts of things to keep uh, keep an eye on. And to keep an eye on that stuff, be sure to check out NewsOK.com. Pick up the Oklahoman seven days a week. We're here. We have all of it. Every inf every bit of information you kind of want to have for these kinds of things. Look forward to you reading our stories, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks. <laughs>